Our journey ends in the Hall of Maps, created to once put together these things of heaven and earth, very true and without error. The project was a grandiose one. From the ceiling, a globe, Apamondo, would be lowered, accompanied by a celestial sphere. The walls would show admirers all the lands of the known world, Europe, Africa, Asia, America, while on the mezzanine, the 48 constellations of the sky would shine. Among the maps, an aureole would have stood out, an admirably contrived clock showing the course of the sun and the balls of the earth. In the lower stands, we would have seen all the herbs and all the animals of those countries. Above the frames, we would have found a series of busts of emperors and princes of those lands. Higher still, over 300 portraits of famous men in history, copies of the most important collection of portraits by Paolo Giovio. A cosmos, if you would, an ordered universe to be symbolically ruled by Duke Cosimo, as suggested by the similarity between Cosmo and Cosimo. A grandiose project, universal, left incomplete due to the death of the Grand Duke in 1574 and of Vasari a few months later. His son, Francesco, would only complete the part regarding the maps, but replacing the court cosmographer Ignazio Danti, a Dominican friar from Santa Maria Novella and highly respected by Cosimo, with Stefano Bonsignori. Maps that, with their scrolls, recount the vision of the world in the second half of the 16th century. This strait took its name from its first discoverer, Magallanes, who, after many dangers, crossed said strait, arriving at the Molucche Islands. These are the last parts discovered to the west, and the remaining space has been left white, not wanting to put something of which there is not certain knowledge. The inhabitants are of a large stature and are much practiced and dedicated to fishing in the holes that they make in the frozen sea. While the cosmography project was diminished in scope, over the following centuries the room was to take up a more practical use. The maps conceal 14 large closets, in which were placed the most important things of value and beauty, which His Excellency does have. The room is part of the Quartiere di Guardaroba, wardrobe wing, fully intended for safekeeping the immense wealth of the court. Clothing, weapons, fabric, furs, linens, tapestries, porcelain dishes, books, paintings, frames, gold and silver, but also unicorn horns and ostrich eggs. A wardrobe that, with the changing of the palazzo's functionality and the gradual loss of its centrality, would progressively expand to the public rooms, the ducal apartments and state rooms, with the loss of their functions, their decoration, once so important to the legitimization and celebration of the power of Cosimo I, became dull, and the building became the old palace, the Palazzo Vecchio in Piazza.